<laughs> oh my god. Anyway, this is Kurgan Cassius for Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're in New York. Yep. Joined by Michael Condon. So a little shot of the t shirt. Yep. Get yours now. Box shot. Get yours now. We might put a little link in. Yep. When this goes out tomorrow. So, well. so get Ben. Get your dad ben, told me the... ben, make sure you send Coogan. Have you you got, what sizes have you got, Essex? I'm going to nick one. You can't nick any of these because they're for people from the garden and they're the sizes which you would need. You must have one here for me. Well, I've got a large. Fucking large. What would you give Joe Joyce? An extra large. Yeah. Find me one, Colin. I'll get you one. I'll get you one. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. When did you get that? Sunday. Sunday. So, this is Wednesday night, so day four. You know when this fight was obviously meant to have been in August and mm. that fell through, and but that still happened. Your yeah. your fight at uh, Falls Park, but didn't really anticipate that this fight with Nikita now would be happening so soon. Did you? Nah, no, nah, I didn't. Did I didn't. You think you have to wait until next to year? To be honest, I, I was past it. I thought it was done, and uh, I was happy that it was done. And I didn't have to speak about it anymore. Um, it was over, and there was no more talking about it, and that was it. So. I made peace with what happened and, and stuff, and you know it was it was finished. So I was I didn't think it was ever going to happen again. So when they came and said to me it, it can happen, ESPN really wanted to happen. Will you take the fight? I said, well, as long as the pair will, of course I'll take the fight. So, you know it's 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 a no brainer. But kind of before the fights happened, would you still have rather if the fight happened in, in Belfast? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely for that for that night. Definitely. Um, yeah, Belfast would have suited better for it, I think. But even here, it suits perfect for it because this is where I restarted my career after the Olympics and this is where I'll close the chapter of the Olympics. So um, it doesn't bother me. It's happening now. I'm, I'm happy. I'm in a good place. Uh, it's it's just still a fight that drove me to training and made me train as hard as I've trained. Um, I've been in camp 14 weeks for it. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've dedicated a lot for this one. This was always a fight that it seemed before you even probably fought for a world title, you needed possibly to have got this mm -hmm. fight out of your system to yep. kind of erase that memory of what happened yep. and then move forward. Is that fair to say? Yeah, well, it's one of the things we, we spoke about when we sat down with Top Rank, when uh, we, we said, well, you know, we wanted to have this rematch and I didn't anticipate it to happen. So kind of, I, I probably anticipated it to happen sooner um, than it actually has, but Obviously, Vladimir's been cut and stuff in fights, and he's had to kind of had stop start, and he didn't turn pro for a way. But once he's saying top rank wanted to get it done and have the fight because that was the only reason he's saying it. We kind of draw back to your debut, and this is what you're kind of referring to, where you started your pro career yeah. was at the, the theatre part of the of Madison Square Garden. You're fighting in the big room. the big boy stadium. Yeah. Uh, Alongside Terence Crawford, yeah. and uh, also a great fight between uh, Tiafimo Lopez and Richard Comey. So it's a great card you're on as well. That's fantastic. Triple header. So it's being billed as a triple header. So I'm not just uh, a part of the card. I'm part of the triple header. And uh, yeah, listen, it's fantastic. It's it's a fight. It's a fight card that a lot of, a lot of people would want to go and watch. Um, the Comey and Lopez fight for me is probably you know the best fight on the card, bar my own. Um, and it's just the, I think Crawford is too good for Kowalowskis, so it's still a good fight, don't get me wrong, but I think it's going to be a, a, an easy one to pick. We're just talking off camera there about <coughs> potentially 2020 for you, undoubtedly, obviously I know you're yeah. focused on this Saturday and that's all you're thinking about, but you come through this weekend, then there will be a world title shot somewhere yeah. in 2020 for you. Yeah, listen, um, obviously that's, that seems to be the case. 2020 is, is, is going to be big, but... And, and I know I will be world champion in 2020. It won't just be a shot. I will be, I will be world champion. I will win a world title in 2020. But it's something I can't focus on. It's something that I've, I've promised myself before this fight week, before kind of halfway through camp, I started to focus on just this. You know, this is the only thing I can focus on because if this doesn't go right, which you know it has the potential to go it could go horribly wrong on Saturday night, but you know I, I'm focused, I'm ready, and I can't slip up on Saturday. I, I feel like my whole career, I've I've always been told what I'm doing next before I've actually finished what's in front of me, and 
I don't think I've ever been able to give full attention to the immediate fight I'm having. So the fact that I have done it this time, I'm very confident and I'm very happy. And that's why I'm, I'm, I've promised myself to speak about what's next. Because this fight this week must have been on your mind since the day in the Olympics. It yeah. must have been. And it's not going to kind of be out of your mind until... Come you know, well, it, it, it is, but you got to go back straight to 2013 when, when he beat me the first time. Yeah. I'd only moved up in the Bantamweight division as an amateur and, and it was three days. I couldn't make the weight for the flyweight. John Janemon just went pro, so Billy Walsh let me move up and I moved up. And, and even that fight, I, I thought I won, but it was closer. You know what I mean? I, and I, I didn't complain. It was it was what it was. He, he got the decision. So, nah, 2016 happened. Stole my dream. Yes, everybody knows the history. Do I, do I look back at with, with anger at it? Not really, because where it's left me and what position I'm in now, I, feel, I think two of the Olympic champions who, who won gold in, in Tokyo have both boxed my undercards, and other Olympic medalists have boxed my undercards, so um, I'm very grateful for what actually happened because it's put me in a position that not many fighters are in. Um, it's given me the kind of position where I can earn a lot more money than a lot of fighters. So you know, I'm very grateful for that and very thankful. So I don't, re- I don't look back at anger with it. I look back at you know what happened, happened, and it was meant to happen. Your t-shirt suggests otherwise. But, but listen, <laughs> obviously the storyline works. You know it fits. He's beat me twice. I've got to get that back, and that's that's. It's not. It's not personal. It's not bitter towards what happened in Rio, but I need to get that back. Um, I don't like going. I don't like getting beaten by anybody. Like, so I, there's not many people who have, who have beat me and haven't got them back. The only person I think has done that is Andrew Selby, the wee bastard. Are you saying you're not bitter about Rio still? Listen, if, if I sit down and delve into it, if I sit down and think about it and start to go, what could have been and, and the celebrations I could have had and the moments I could have had with like, my father being on an Olympic podium together and stuff, um, I could start to get bitter about it, but... There's no point of worrying about the past because the past is in the past. You know what I mean? I can't control that. I can only control the present and the fu- um, and what's going to happen in the future. And even that you can't control. But um, I'm living in the moment. And, and, and for me, I'm, I'm, even this fight week, everything has been chilled. Um, and I'm just in the moment for Saturday night. Is it annoying that people like me will ask you about future fights when you've got this Saturday? No, yeah, it is. Uh, but I'm not gonna lie, it is. It, it, it's annoying because people just kind of seem to look over who you're, who you're facing, and then that kind of makes you think. Well, are they gonna say, I don't care what you think, but me, it makes you think they think they're gonna say, well, he was gonna win it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But you know, I mean, it's, nothing is promised in life. Tomorrow is not promised. So, you know, I think Saturday night is is all can be in my sights, and obviously people are gonna ask, and people want to ask, and people want to. You know, speculate what's going to happen next, but nothing can happen next if Saturday night doesn't go well. So, my second question to that will yeah. be Josh Warrington next year. Is that your kind of. <laughs> <laughs> can I just stress? This isn't yeah. you talking about it, this is yeah. me asking, but that's yeah. why I said the first thing. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's the case with a lot of fighters. People say, oh, he's talking about him again, but yeah. it's not really, because you're only really answering yeah. what you're being asked. But. Well, I'm not going to say anybody because anytime you say someone, people go wanker and all this here, anything you're calling people out. What I will say is, whoever is the champion at the time, whoever has the belt at the time, I will be taking it. Whoever the champion I face on, whatever date it is, I will be winning. And I know I will be winning. I'll be very, very confident. I can see it already. So, um, so maybe, what, may, may even saying that. See, they're making me see, make me go back and I don't need to. I don't need to see. I don't need to. I need to see what's happening Saturday night first. I'm not going to label this video Conlon calls out Warrington. It's okay. Well, who more, mate? So uh, keep him away. <laughs> keep him away. All right. Fair, fair comment. Fair comment. Um, but it is, and this fight, like I said, this isn't any opponent. This yeah. is a huge fight for you. And a this, huge there's there's obviously yeah. huge emotion behind this. I would say more so for Vladimir because I believe I have a detached myself from 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 most of it. Um, but with with him, his career is. Is always kind of remembered now, and, and what he's thought of now is for the Olympics and, and getting the decision over me. So, you know, he's probably going to have a lot more emotional attachment to this than me. But when you get in there, Saturday night, who knows what can happen? Um, there'll be crowd roaring uh, and two guys who have history wanting to settle something once and for all. 
Not long to find out. Not long. Not, not long. long. I'm excited. I'm chilled and I'm excited, so um, it's going to be a good one. Let's change the, the focus off you now. Hit it. Let's do it. Paddy Barnes. Yes. Uh, called uh, an end to his career recently. Yeah. And uh, he's gone through some kind of, from his obviously his great uh, amateur, amateur career, career that he had, but he, he's had some tough moments in the pro yeah. games. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't to be for Paddy, was it? No, listen, it wasn't. Yeah, he's, he had one of the best amateur careers in Irish boxing ever. Um, double Olympic medalist. Not, not, no Irish boxer has ever done that. Won two Olympics and won two medals. He actually got the three. And you know, he's, uh, he was a special, he's a special bloody fighter for Ireland forever. He's part of the history as always and, and created so much history. And, and done it with you know, character as well. He, he, everybody knew him as a little angry man and, and someone who was a messer and stuff and, and that's what he was but you know when he put the work in and the amateurs he, he, he achieved so much and I think he maybe just left left it too late to turn pro but you can't blame him either because the landscape of pro boxing in Ireland the, in, in, even in the UK there was no money around the later weights then in tw after 2012 after 2008 Boxing was kind of really low. It wasn't until the AJs came on the scene that where boxing just kind of took off again. Um, so yeah, I think he, he turned too late. But you know, I I prefer prefer him to achieve what he achieved and you know obviously turn pro way back then, be world champion and make no money. Well, <coughs> there. Yeah. Um, well, listen, whatever Paddy goes on to do now, like yeah. I said to you, he's kind of. Uh, Place in Irish boxing. Is always he's got a job, and I mean, he's working with Irish boxing, so yeah. it's fantastic. You know, um, he's moved on the the better things. Um, he dared to be great in the pro game. Um, tried to win a world title in his fifth fight, came up short, and and just he's a battler. You know, you even seen his last fight where he just kept going and going and going. He could have called quits so many times, and that, but you know he didn't. So you gotta you gotta respect that. Hmm. Um. Yeah, Paddy can always have a job at IFL. Actually, I don't know about that. He's actually got to be. I, I've been saying he's got to be careful in his job now because he's got to watch what he tweets. Finally, when you're working for yourself, you don't got to watch what you tweet. No, no, he does. Mm, that's that's an interesting situation. Um, did you watch uh, Ruiz Joshua? I did. What did you think? I thought it was it was very good performance from Joshua. He did exactly what he needed to do. I see loads of people criticised him, which I think is very unjust. Um, it wasn't the biggest entertainment fight you're going to watch this year. No. But what it was is a disciplined performance and, and something that he needed to do. Um, obviously, he said in the past about Fury dancing and ringing, didn't respect it. That's not how you win, but it is how you win. Fury's done it and he showed. So... I think it was great. I, did, I, I, I thought Ruiz was going to stop him. I thought it was going to be the same over. I thought it was too soon. I thought he took took it too quick after, but he needed a ticket to get his belts back. So, uh, big respect to him, man. He had the weight of the world on his shoulders and he came come up Trump. So, can't, can't, help, can't help but like that and, uh, and respect that. I, I know people don't, but I do. And I think I thought it was brilliant. Fair play to him. It, it seemed like his best chance and his less kind of risky chance of winning that fight was to do what he did yeah. as opposed to kind of end and up even I, a, I didn't think yeah. he could do that yeah. I didn't think he could move like that for, for 12 rounds especially I've never done it previously to doing it in a world title fight heavy world title fight with so much on the lane legacy on the lane everybody in the world doubting you he went in and did something that he's never done before in a, in a professional boxing ring so you you got to respect him Absolutely, um, and then next year we don't know what's going to happen because he's got mandatories with Usyk and Pulev. I I don't want to see him against Wilder. Oh, I do want to see it, but for him, if I was him, I, I probably wouldn't do it. You don't think he uh, should fight Wilder? No, I just think Wilder is, is too. If you're a fury, you're you're able to move so fluidly and everything. Is he's not as fluid as uh, he can move, but he's not as fluid, and he showed he can move, but he's not as fluid as, as Fury and. Fury can move around, and even that, that he was still caught by the bomb. Um, and I, I think Fury, Fury beats him, but even at that, I'm not, I'm not confident when I say it. So 
that even that scares me that fight but after seeing him against Ortiz he just needs he needs a split second then it's game over switched on switched on for yeah, 36 minutes Absolutely. not one second less because that guy can just punch like a horse or he can kick like a horse's kick he can, he can punch like their kicks who's here from your team then we have got the one and only Harlem Ben Eubank. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I've done that purposely. You knew I've done that purposely. Because people say I don't know if I would have thought I'm going to rest of it. No, convincing me. Jamie over. Um, my nutritionist, David Dunn. Uh, physio, Patrick Harding. We've got the one and only Troy Newman, who was undefeated and just drawed. Um, <laughs> 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 Charlie Beat um, and uh, Adam Booth and of course Russ Amber. Wait, your dad? Yeah, of course I'm a dad. John Conlon, who I could have forget the man. Obviously. Yeah. And, uh, Including Cassius, Team MTK. Team Conlon, give yeah. me an XL and I'll, I'll rock it. Yeah, okay. Russ Amber just sold an XL. He sold an extra one. He took an extra one. We'll find one from somewhere. Yeah. I'll get you one. And uh, obviously Big Joe's got his date now. Yeah. In Germany against uh, Mark I love Mark. him. I love Joe, you know. He's just, a, he's just a good guy. Like, you know what he is? You see him walking into the spa and just see women looking at him. just like, that guy could just walk in anywhere and be like, I'm Joe, I'm taking your girl. But he's not like that. You could just imagine him just doing that. He's just a beast of a man. Um, great character. People think he's, like, doesn't talk around. He's, he's one of the funniest people I've met. Um, really, really funny. Um, good crack and loves the conspiracy. Loves it what? Conspiracy. Really? Mm. Well, Ask that? him about Flat Earth. <laughs> He's not a Flat Earther. He hates Harlem because Harlem's a Flat Earther. World Harlem's a Flat Earther. <laughs> I would like to listen to a conversation uh, between Joe and Harlem. I think It's unbelievable. Yeah, I think it is un- it's one of the most interesting. They're just like, what is going on here? Right. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I still don't. But it's better to get everything out in the open, isn't it? Yeah. Get everything out. Yeah. You know. Be straight up. Do you know anything or think you know anything? Come and join the party. No? Good. Join my party. Castle <laughs> Alright, well listen. Appreciate your time. It's good. Have you got anything else you'd uh, like to add? Nope, just throw the box roll link in and get your redemption t shirts night. <laughs> get them before. Uh, <laughs> 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 Can't we get Harlem modelling one? Like walking up and down? Huh? Go ahead, Harlem. Why not? Go on, mate. Redemption, mate. <laughs> fake gloves. So, look, whoever look. Not the official ones. Not the official ones. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm taking all the, hor- the horse out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only really joking. That was a joke. <laughs> no, of course, course that was a joke. The training gloves. Right. Michael, thank you very much, and uh, Keep on. we'll uh, speak I'm, to you soon. I'm good now, mate. It is special. <laughs> Absolute dynamite. Oh my-